Hey guys, it's Nate Tennant. The FAA outlines flight training in the Airman Certification Standards, or ACS for short. Today we've got Todd Shilnut, who's the 2015 AOPA Flight Instructor of the Year, to let us know how this relates to your training. Hello, we're here to talk to you today about the Airman Certification Standards. And the Airman Certification Standards are a tool, it's an assessment tool that is used by instructors and examiners to be able to find out if you have what it takes to be a pilot. So the first thing we want to look at within the Airman Certification Standards is uh, what is called the area of operations. Now the Airman Certification Standard has several areas of operations within it. And each one of these areas of operations are specific areas that the FAA deems that you should know this information. Okay? So if we look at a very specific area of operation, you can turn to your Airman Certification Standards and look at Area of Operation 1. And you can see that that Area of Operation would be Pre-Flight Preparation. If we look at the Task A under Pilot Qualifications, we can see that it has several items underneath it within the Area of Operation. We can see that the first one is the task itself. So the task itself is the applicant should know about Pilot Qualifications. So in this particular task, what the examiner will be looking at is, do you know what you have to do or have with you in order to exercise the privileges of your pilot certificate? So we start off in each task with the references. So where do we actually go to study this material? In this particular part here, the references gives you exactly where you would go within the regulations or the FAA handbooks in order to gather the material that you need to study this particular portion. And then we would have the objective. Now the objective for each task is uh, a know, consider, and do portion for the pilot. So what you should know, what you should consider, and what you should do for the task. Uh, the next one you would see would be the knowledge area. So we want to see that the applicant demonstrates the understanding of and then the specific items listed within that area. So if you are studying for an exam and you're trying to study for pilot qualifications, then you would actually go to the very first one where it says currency, regulatory compliance, privileges and limitations, and you should be able to talk about that fluently. Okay? The ACS says you should show mastery of the knowledge. So that's it's pretty deep understanding. So make sure that you know those particular items. Uh, the next portion would be risk management. And the way that you should really look at this risk management is what would be some of the problems that would arise out of me not knowing this information or me not being able to do this particular task. Then we have our skills section at the very end of it. And the skills section is what the examiner ultimately wants to see out of you. So, as an examiner, I would ask you a question such as, what do you have to have before you leave the house with you in your personal possession in order for you to act uh, as a private pilot or as a commercial pilot? And you would just tell me those items that you have uh, to have with you. That would ensure to me that you know what it takes in order to act as pilot in command. So in essence, when you go for your practical exam, if you have the knowledge and you have the risk management skills and you have the skills in order to perform the task, it should be a relatively easy experience for you. So now that we've actually looked at what an area of operation would look like under the oral portion of your exam, let's talk about what it would look like under the flight portion of the exam. So if we look in our ACS under Air of Operation Task 6 for the private pilot and we look at Task C which is diversion, we can see that we have certain references here. It gives the 8083 which is your handbooks, uh, the Airman's Information Manual and navigation charts. So in order for you to properly do a diversion you have to be familiar with those references. Now if we look at our objective, of course, if you remember what I said earlier, on our objective, it's what we should know, what we should consider, and what we should do on this particular task. 
So it says here to determine that the applicant exhibits satisfactory knowledge, risk management, and skills associated with the diversion, which is pretty much the objective for each area of operation within the HCS. Now we also see that we our knowledge portion here says that the applicant demonstrates the understanding of selecting a divert destination. So in this particular one, you actually would be the one who actually does select your diversion point. Some examiners select your diversion point, but you must actually show the examiner that you should select your diversion point. And then being able to deviate from ATC instructions and or the flight plan. So just by the knowledge of this particular portion here is something that the examiner could actually ask you in the oral portion of the exam too. So it's important that you know the knowledge portion of every area of operation. We also see here that the risk management associated with this particular task is actually a little bit larger than other risk management areas because there's a lot of things involved with this. We're actually going right off the cuff and we're doing something that we didn't plan to do. So now we're in the midst of planning in the air. So it's a diversion is really the epitome of pilotage and dead reckoning. And then we can see that our skills that we have to possess in order to do this particular task is for us to select the appropriate diversion and the airport and the route, as well as make the correct estimate of your heading, ground speed, arrival time, fuel consumption, and the divert airport. And then maintain your altitude and heading. Uh, within altitude within plus or minus 200 and heading within plus or minus 15 degrees. This would be for the private pilot, uh, not necessarily for the commercial pilot. So now we have a good idea of how each area of operation and task can be used during your practical exam with the examiner or with the FAA. One of the things that we want to understand is that there is a lot more information included in with the Airman Certification Standards but it's in the back of the publication, uh, in the appendices of the ACS. So uh, if you have your ACS with you, you can turn to the back and you can see that we have Appendix 1, Eligibility. You may actually see that in the ACS, it has a specific FAR number to refer to, and that's the FAR number that you should refer to in order to find out if you do meet the eligibility requirements for the examination. Appendix 2 is going to be your knowledge test procedures and tips. Uh, this was once in a separate document, but now we have it in this document, which is great because, again, the ACS is something that we should use from the very first portion of your training. Appendix 3 is going to be the report that actually comes out after you take your test. The testing center will immediately print out a test report for you. Now, one of the things you're going to do, which is very, very important, is they'll have this little machine, this little handheld machine, and they'll actually crimp or place a seal over the piece of paper. Now, when they do that, that's very important that you don't lose that particular report. Why? Because when you go to meet your prerequisites for the test, one of the things that you have to have is a testing report with an embossed seal. One of the other great things about the Airman Knowledge Test Report is the test report will give you a list of the questions, knowledge, test codes that you missed. And with these test codes, you can sit down with your instructor and go over the information that you missed. Appendix 5, we've already briefly touched on a little bit. It talks about the, the roles of each person who should come into play while using the ACS. And we have the applicant, the instructor, and the evaluator. Uh, the evaluator can be a designated pilot examiner or an aviation safety inspector. Now, Appendix 5 deals specifically with the practical test roles, responsibilities, and outcomes. We've already briefly touched on this a little bit about the roles. We have the applicant, we have the instructor, we also have the evaluator. So, if you remember, the applicant's role is to be familiar with the ACS. The instructor's role is that he properly train you to meet or exceed the standards of the ACS. And the evaluator's role is to ensure that you actually do meet the standards of the ACS. Um, one of the other things that we have to look at is uh, how else can the applicant be prepared for uh, the check ride? Well, uh, it's quite simple. In the ACS, they give a list, a checklist for uh, the applicant. And so when you get ready to go to an exam, as you can see here, we'll post a picture of it. 
Uh, this is the practical test checklist for the exam. When you get ready to go into the exam a day before, a couple days before, just print out this checklist and go right down beside it and check each block. Make sure you have these particular items. Um, if you don't have all these items that uh, checked here, then it would not be a good thing to actually show up for the check ride. These are pretty good grounds for the examiner to not even start the check ride to begin with. So you want to make sure that you have everything on this list. Appendix 6 is a pretty big one. Uh, the FAA nowadays is really, really big on risk management. And almost this entire Appendix 6 is dealing with some form of risk management. But during the entire check ride, the examiner uh, or evaluator is going to be looking to make sure that you have these particular skills. For instance, such as stall and spin awareness. Uh, if he's looking for proper rudder control and how you're recovering. If he sees you recover from a stall uh, that's uh, breaking to the left and you've put full right aileron, well, that not, may not be the proper recovery procedure that the examiner's looking for. Uh, use a checklist. If you are preparing to take off and you don't refer to a paper checklist, that also may be a problem and the examiner could stop the check right there. Uh, use of distractions. Use of distractions are something that it's not meant to be a game by the examiner, but he wants to see that you're, you're that in the in the moment that you don't let other things interfere with what you're trying to do. One of the other things is positive change of flight controls. Please do not remove your hands or feet from the flight controls until you are sure that the examiner or evaluator has control of that aircraft. Um, the last part is the ADM crew resource management, risk management, and single pilot resource management. This can really all be accomplished if you use something called the PAVE checklist. That's uh, P-A-V-E. Uh, so the pilot, uh, if you know the I'm safe checklist, you could kind of get all the pilot pre-qualed right underneath the, the PAVE checklist, underneath the P portion of that. And then, of course, the A would be aircraft, and you would have all the acronyms for your aircraft, the I'm the uh, aviate the grab card flaps eight tomato flames or whichever ones that you've learned to ensure the airworthiness of the aircraft and then your v would be your environment so make sure that you understand the weather the notums the airspace along your route and then the e would be external pressures and these would be those hazardous attitudes that we talk about during your training uh, if you have uh, get there itis you want to say oh not so fast take your time nothing's that important Appendix 7 is going to very specifically deal with the aircraft equipment and operational requirements uh, and limitations of uh, the aircraft that you're going to bring to the check ride. Uh, it's very important that you understand that if you have a device installed that aircraft, you are going to have to use that particular device on that aircraft. You will have to show proficiency. So if you have an autopilot, even though you've never used the autopilot, you will have to use the autopilot on a check ride. If it's built in, the examiner is supposed to um, see that you know how to use that particular device. Um, Appendix 8 deals with the use of flight simulators. Now this is a kind of an open-end subject and it's, it not only deals with the certification part of it, uh, dealing with how you train, but also deals with what you can actually use, what kind of simulators you can actually use for the check ride. Uh, this is a very open-ended subject, so I would definitely recommend that if you're going to use a simulator for your check ride, or if you're using a simulator for any portion of your check ride, please consult the current FARs and advisor circles that deal with this subject matter. Now, I know that you're saying right now, well, where did everybody get this information from? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, Appendix 9 is going to tell you where they got all the information. It's because it deals with the references for the ACS. So if you're kind of unsure about uh, where to go to find out specific pieces of information, or if you're simply just wanting to pick up an ACS and start studying for your next rating, you can just go to Appendix 9 and it shows you all the books and handbooks and everything associated with knowing what you need to know for the knowledge and skill portion of your exam. Uh, Appendix 10 just deals with abbreviations and acronyms. So if you saw something in the ACS that you really don't know, or if you don't know what ACS means, you can just go to the Appendix 10 and it'll tell you what it means. Hope you enjoyed your seminar today. And for Gold Seal, I'm Todd Shelnut.